Okay, so welcome back. So here's what our game looks like right now. Uh, we have our pieces that slide in. Um, they're now remade to look similar to Candy Crush. Uh, we have kind of a cartoony background, and we have this nice big open area at the top where we can have our, um, our UI. However, uh, right now with the cartoony background and the revised uh, images for the pieces, everything's kind of visually noisy. So it would be nice to put a little background behind each of these spaces to make sure that um, it's easier to differentiate between what uh, the player is supposed to be looking at and what's background. So to do that, I made a quick little piece of art here, um, which is just this kind of gray square. I'm going to pull that into my art folder. Um, I'll include this in the, in the Git and all that. So right now I've got my tile background is what I called it. And you can see here it's kind of a rounded corner uh, square and it's uh, a little transparent. I used rounded corners so that if it's next to a blank space or if it's on the corner of the board it wouldn't look too weird. I'm going to change the pixels per unit on this to 512. And I don't need to change anything else except for making sure the texture type is sprite and UI. And then I'll click apply. Now I already have a tile background prefab. Uh, if you remember from way back when. So what I'm going to do here on this tile background is I'm going to change its um, sprite from being background to being tile background, which is what I just created. Um, I'm also going to make sure that... Oops. Go back here to my tile background. I'm going to make sure that the color is um, pure white, full alpha value, even though this is semi-transparent. Oh, and it looks like the old one. If I click away and click back, it changes back to what it should. Now, a couple issues here. If I hit play, uh, the first problem comes from those breakable tiles, and that's relatively easy to fix. So what happened was as soon as we hit play, all of those background tiles were destroyed. And the reason they were destroyed is because they're set to have zero hit points. So I'm just going to change this to one, and that'll fix one of the problems, but not both of them. Now if I hit play, you'll see my pieces fall in, but I don't see those background tiles. If I flip over to scene view, they're right here, 10 units up from where they should be. And the reason why is that offset that we put into the board way back when, in order to make the tiles look like they're falling in, these aren't actually falling in. I never updated it to make the background look like it's sliding in two. So really quickly here, you just need to go to our scripts and open up our board script. I don't want updates. Um, in the board script, I'm going to look for the setup method. And in the setup method here, um, if it's not a blank space, cool. I've got my temporary position, which is vector two i plus j offset. And then I'm going to generate these at that temporary position, which means that they're being generated um, 10 units too tall. So I'm just going to solve this by creating another little vector 2. And I'm going to call this tile position new vector 2. And this is just ij with no offset. And rather than generating the background tiles at temp position, I'm going to generate them at tile position. So there we go. I'm just going to say really fast, jump back into Unity here, and let that compile. I swear I'll be patient this time. And once that's done, I'll hit play. And I should be able to see. And there we go. Now, because I used um, these kind of rounded corners, there's these weird little spaces. But the reason I did that is now if I go to my board, and I change my board layout to a different size, say six. Um, and I'm six by eight, so let's say that I make some blank spaces here. So I'm gonna make one blank space at zero, zero, lower left corner. I'm gonna make another one at five, zero, lower right hand corner. I'm gonna make another one at six, seven, uh, which is upper right. I'm gonna make another one at zero, seven, which is upper left. And then I got two more here. I'll just make them randomly at 3-3 three, three and at 3-4. Three, 
and turn these both into blank spaces. All right, so now if I hit play, um, it should look a little better with those rounded rectangles. Oops, index out of range. Did I go? Oh, yep. These, this shouldn't be six, this should be five, five, seven. There we go. Index out of range because I called something that was at position six when this only goes from zero to five. So really simple error there. Uh, so let me hit play. And there we go. So this looks a little better um, when I've got these blank spaces here. You could size these down a bit and we can see how that would look. I actually didn't think about that until just now. So instead of having these at 512, um, my dots were at 768. So let's, let's just try 768. That might look a little better without that, those weird little uh, gaps between them. So if I hit play here, that's a little better. Let's not do quite 768. Let's do, 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 do let's see, what's 128 plus 512, 640. Uh, click apply. I like moving in powers of two. So if I'm going to increase or decrease the size, I like to do it by something that is a power of two. It's not necessarily needed. You can just pick random numbers if you want to, and Unity will treat it just fine. I just like using powers of two. Okay, that's not too bad. That's actually pretty good. So, all right, cool. Everything else is working. Now, let's get to what we're actually here for, which is a scoring system. So um, I'm going to use some kind of placeholder stuff here. First, I'm going to be working in the top UI space. So I'm going to add to this some text. So I'm going to right click on top UI, choose UI, and then choose text. And by default, the text gets created at the center of the screen. I'm going to bring my text up here because I want my score to be kind of in the upper left. And I'm going to reposition my anchors to the upper left as well. Now for my text, uh, I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to align it center in both directions. I'm going to change it to just four zeros. Uh, we'll leave the font at Arial for now, but I do want to change the color to, let's do a pure black for now. A white might be better. Yeah, let's do white. Um, I'm going to change my style to bold, and I'm going to click best fit and see how that looks. Okay, that's not too bad. I'm going to make my text box just a little bit bigger. There. Um, all right, cool. So that's all I want to do for that text right now. I'm going to rename this object so I know what it is. And I'm going to call it score text. Now, to actually manage the score, I'm going to create a game object here. So in my hierarchy, I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call this score manager and I'm going to parent this to the board. Now my score manager is going to do exactly that. It's going to manage the score that is currently happening in the board. I have my hint manager and I could just make a script and attach it to that, but for some reason I'm just used to making a game object for it. So there's not necessarily a reason to do that. I could have just attached the script to the board anyway. So I'm going to click add component and the component I'm going to add is going to be a new script. Oh yeah, and if I've never done it this way before, you can create a new script by going to scripts, right clicking and choosing create C-sharp script, or um, you can click add component. And if you type something that isn't an actual component, it'll offer to create a new script for you. So let's just do it the way that I've always been doing it for this. I'm going to go to create C-sharp script and I'm going to call this score manager. And then I'm going to open that up in uh, Visual Studio. So in Visual Studio, I've got my score manager here. I'm going to make some references to the game's ability to um, reference the UI system. And so in order to do that, I need to add to the using tags up here. So underneath where it says using Unity Engine, I need to add using Unity Engine.UI so that I have access to all of the UI. Uh, things. 
Um, in my global variables here, I'm going to create a few of them. The first one, I'm going to create a, uh, let's do public text. I'm going to call this score text. I'm also going to create a public int, which I'm going to call score. Um, yeah, I'm going to create a little method down here, which I'm going to call increase score. So this is going to be public void so that I can call it from the board, which is where I'm actually destroying things. So public void increase score. And for my increase of score here, I'm going to need to have an argument I'm going to pass in. So I'm going to pass in an integer amount to increase. And then in the actual method, I'm going to say score plus equals amount to increase. And what this means is if I call this method, awesome. What this means is if I call this method from another script or from another game object, I need to make sure to pass in exactly how much I'm going to increase the score by. Uh, what I want to do next is in my update method, I'm going to just make sure that it's constantly updating the score value on the text. So I'm going to say score text. And what I want to access from that is the text feature. So dot text is equal to, and I can't set it directly to score. The reason why is text needs to be a string. And if I set it directly to score, I'm not doing any kind of conversion. So there's a couple solutions to this. I could add dot to string in which case it'll automatically convert that from an integer value to a string value, which text can do. And the other solution I've seen done quite a bit is uh, adding a blank or an empty string in front of it. So open close quotation marks and then plus score. Either of those, as far as I'm concerned, are probably relatively equivalent to each other. Now, I'm gonna save my script. I'm gonna go back to Unity. I'm going to assign something really, really fast here. I'm going to go to my score manager. And once this is done compiling, I'll add my score manager script to it. So score manager script. Uh, and it needs to know what the text is. So I'll add my score manager text. Now, to make sure this is working, right now I have three zeros. If I hit play, it should change from three zeros to one zero because that's what score is initialized as. So let's test that out. All right, cool. So my score is working. If I go out of play mode, again, that's going to change back to three zeros. So uh, next thing I need to do is in my board class, I'm going to make a reference to my score manager. And I'll do that where I have all my other references in my board class. So <laughs> background tile, find matches, find matches. There we go. So we'll do private score manager, score manager. All right, and my score manager here, I'm gonna save that really quickly. Uh, I need to finish that reference. Oops. So in my start method, I'm gonna say that score manager is equal to find object of type score manager and I'm doing that because I know I'm only ever going to have one score manager in my scene now I need to find where I'm actually destroying the tiles and oh, before I do that I'm going to create a couple other variables here really quickly so to go along with the score manager uh, I'm going to have a public integer which I'm going to call base piece value and I'm going to default that to 20 I'm also going to have a private integer, which I'm going to call um, streak value. And I'm going to default that to one. So what's going to happen is every time we make a match, the next pair of matches is going to be worth more than the first pair was. Uh, Candy Crush does this as, I think they call it streaks, I'm not sure, but you get that like sweet text that shows up. So I'm going to go down to where I break tiles. And actually, I'm going to go to the collapse and refill routine. So it's pretty down near the bottom of my board script. I've got my 
check for matches, switch pieces. Here we go. Fill board coroutine. So what I want to do really quickly here is this gets called to refill the board and then it checks to see if there are matches on the board again. And if there are matches on the board again, I want to increase the streak value. So streak value plus equals one. And then when I move, and when I switch everything back to the move state, I want to reset the streak value. Streak value equals one. So I'm increasing it. I can actually just do plus plus. I don't know what I'm thinking this morning. Streak value plus plus to increase the streak value. Um, and then I'll reset the streak value down here. The reason I'm doing that is now when I actually destroy the pieces, which is decrease row, decrease row, destroy matches, destroy matches at here. So when I actually destroy the pieces, I can give, if it's the first um, iteration of the streak, I can give 20 points per match. Uh, if it's the second, I can give 40. If it's the third, I can give 60 and so on so that they're increasing in point value. So I'm going to destroy all dots column row and now I'm going to increase the score. So I'm going to do score manager dot increase score. And the amount I want to increase it by is the default value, which I forget what I called that. So up here, uh, base piece value. Back to where I was. Here, there we go. Base piece value times streak value. And this is going to cause the amount that's being added to increase. And then once everything's resettled, it'll go back to what it was. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to pop back into Unity here. And once it's done compiling, I'll test it out. So I'll hit play. Let everything fall in. Okay, so let's make a match. So that three gave me 60, but the next three gave me 120, causing me to get 180. So 240 from that, another 60 from that, 60 there, but then another 120. So we're creating this kind of streak system. And uh, if you want to, I mean, kind of as an individual challenge, what you can do is you can make some text that actually kind of animates in and says sweet or good job or way to go or, you know, maybe something sarcastic if that's more your, your mood. So we're creating a system here where essentially we can have um, a check to see what the score is and have that be one of the end level conditions or have that be one of the conditions for gaining our stars. We'll talk about adding that uh, bar here that gradually fills up because we need to have some extra architecture in here to know what our, our end game goals are. But for now, we have this neat little score system working. So we'll be revisiting this later, um, doing a high score and doing that bar that fills up. Uh, but for now, that's kind of our scoring system. Uh, the next thing we're going to be working on here, uh, let's see, is bug fixes and chaining bombs. So those are the next uh, topics we're going to have. I know people have been asking for how to chain bombs for a while, and there's a few bugs that need to be fixed. So that's what we'll be covering next. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And you can follow me on Twitter to find out exactly when I post my uh, next videos. You can also join our Discord channel, and I have a repository of the project available at Git if you want to, and I'll have that link in the description down below as well. So I hope this video finds you well, and have yourself a wonderful day.